April 8th marked the day when the sun hid behind the moon, but it's what happened after that has caught the world's attention. Reports flooded in from across the globe, unusual, bizarre, phenomena that defy explanation. Why did the shadows dance contrary to the laws of light? How did the silent whispers fill the air? And what caused the sudden chill that swept across the lands, leaving scientists baffled and seekers of the unknown hungry for answers? After the eclipse, there are certain things that will happen. I want to tell you about some of the things you will witness. First of all, God's word will continue to come true. What I mean by that is Jesus gave us various signs to help us understand the current times, not just one. Many people are focused on Luke 21, 25, which talks about signs in the sun, moon, stars, and distress among nations. The April eclipse can be seen as one of these signs in the sun, moon, and stars. However, we should also remember that Jesus provided us with a complete picture of prophecy. In the book of Matthew, there are strange signs in the sky mentioned. However, these signs are just one part of what is described in Matthew 24. It reveals that in the last days, there will be a huge amount of deception. This deception will be unlike anything we've seen before. It will be a very obvious kind of deception, but surprisingly, some people will still believe it. Additionally, we will see more false prophets, false messiahs, wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, and pandemics. Christians will face more persecution, and people's love for one another will grow cold. The gospel will be spread to the entire world. So when we look at the signs of the last days, we shouldn't focus on just one sign. As we approach the end, things will become even more chaotic. It seems that as time goes on, the world becomes increasingly unstable. Deception is becoming more common, even in movies, music, and certain churches and their teachings. If you research online, you'll find that Christian persecution is increasing. On the other hand, with the growth of the internet and streaming services, the gospel is reaching more people worldwide. As we get closer to the end of the age, the world will become even crazier because we will see more signs of the end times intensifying. I want to mention that in the coming weeks, months, and even years, you will notice more and more things that may worry you. But remember this, the Bible says in Luke 21 verse 28, that when these things start happening, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. The main message for all of us as believers is that when we see the signs described in the Bible, we should not be influenced by distractions or doubts. Instead, we should stand firm and remain hopeful because Jesus Christ's return is getting closer. David Wilkerson preached a message called Last Day's Satanic Seduction. He said something like this, I recently heard a radio host mocking the coming of Jesus Christ, saying that Christians have been talking about the last days for 2,000 years and nothing has changed. Every generation has faced its own troubles and disasters. He challenged Christians to talk about it 200 years from now. However, the Bible predicts that this kind of scoffing will happen in the last days. Peter warned us about it, saying that in the last days, there will be scoffers who live by their own desires and question the promise of Jesus' return. David Wilkerson further explained that it's not that evil has become stronger or more tempting than in previous times. Despite the increasing wickedness, there are Christians today who are growing closer to Jesus and living holy lives, even more so than past generations. There is a faithful group of people, the remnant, who are living righteously amidst all the immorality and are untouched by its influence. These are the overcomers in Jesus Christ. However, Paul observed that in this last generation, there will be a tendency to listen to deceptive spiritual influences. He is saying that a terrible place called hell will open up and release many tempting spirits. These spirits can tempt even the most faithful followers of God. However, it's important to understand that these tempting spirits may sound appealing, but they are not trustworthy. The true teachings of Jesus challenge and expose their deceitful nature. They require us to respond by changing our behavior and thoughts to align with God's word. He used an example to illustrate this point. 
Imagine if the Apostle Paul came back to life and saw the modern miracles we have, like cars and airplanes. It would amaze him. However, if he entered our homes and saw the small box we turn on, he would be shocked to see that it provides easy access to sinful and immoral content. This is a powerful temptation that can lead people astray. The term seduced signifies being enticed and led astray from what is morally right and pure. Satan has influenced some of you present here tonight. He has already taken hold of you and is guiding you towards a seductive path, drawing you away from the core of God's heart and Jesus Christ's teachings. You are under a state of deception, and the Holy Spirit desires to expose this tonight, revealing it to you so that you may be saved from it. Consider the following. Satanic seduction is never openly evil. You will not witness a frightening red demon attempting to seduce someone. Instead, it will manifest in subtle ways, seemingly harmless actions that end up consuming more of your time than anything related to God. Let's examine a few practical examples. Entertainment. Your phone and social media consume a significant amount of your time as you endlessly scroll. Then, in an attempt to relax, you indulge in watching movies or new television series. Some may even opt for virtual reality experiences, while others immerse themselves in gaming. Before you realize it, the day has ended and you have dedicated no time to prayer or reading the Bible. Perhaps you prioritize fitness, working out, and preparing meals, ensuring you get a full night's sleep before starting work in the morning. Day after day, you may only offer half-hearted prayers or read a verse or two before bed. These activities are not inherently bad, but when they prevent you from spending time with God, you are deceived about what truly matters. Distractions encountered in life can have a devastating impact. Consider the significant harm that can result from a driver who is not fully focused. Envision the potential danger of being distracted while traversing a long staircase. A surgeon must block out all diversions in order to carry out surgery effectively. However, as believers in Christ, it is crucial for us to actively strive to maintain our concentration on Christ. This era we find ourselves in is unparalleled in history, with a constant barrage of distractions assaulting us from various sources. We are incessantly pulled away by technology, global events, and the individuals present in our lives. At any given moment, there is always something or someone vying for our attention. Yet I implore you, fellow followers of God, that if we permit these distractions and grant them entry, they will cause us to lose sight of what truly holds the utmost importance. The primary focus lies in your connection with the Almighty God. The crucial aspect is your bond with Jesus Christ. The key factor is your adherence to God's teachings. The utmost importance lies in loving your neighbor as yourself and leading a life that is both holy and pleasing to God. This aligns with your duty and is a reasonable act of service. Adrian Rogers, a pastor, once expressed that a backslider is a saved individual who has lost fellowship with God. If there was ever a time when your love for the Lord Jesus Christ exceeded the present, when prayer, worship, and service were more profound, then you may be experiencing a decline in your spiritual journey. If you have ceased praying, what is diverting your attention? If you have stopped devoting time to studying God's Word, what is distracting you? In December 1972, the United States faced a devastating aviation disaster, the Eastern Airlines Flight 401 crash. The tragedy's significance lies not only in what occurred, but also in how it unfolded. According to a report by the National Transportation Safety Board, the pilots had lowered the landing gear handle. However, the pilot noticed that the green light, which signals the full extension and locking of the nose landing gear, did not illuminate. They immediately informed the control tower about the issue and explained that they would need to circle the runway until they could find a working green light. The control tower acknowledged their situation and instructed them to maintain an altitude of 2,000 feet. To investigate the problem, the pilots activated the autopilot while they attempted to identify the cause of the malfunction. 
According to reports, the flight crew collaborated for approximately seven to eight minutes in their efforts to diagnose the issue with the light. An article from NBC Miami detailed the incident, stating that the pilots engaged the autopilot to inspect the light and landing gear. However, the lack of lighting made it difficult to see. Eventually, the plane received clearance to return to Miami, but at that moment, a crew member noticed something was wrong. We did something to the altitude, the first officer remarked, to which the captain replied, aren't we still at 2,000? The first officer questioned, and the captain immediately exclaimed, hey, what's happening here? Within seconds, the plane crashed into the ground at a speed of 227 miles per hour and a distance of 19 miles from the airport. Investigators determined that the probable cause of the crash was the accidental disengagement of the autopilot and the entire flight crew's failure to monitor the flight instruments. They became too preoccupied with fixing the landing light and neglected to check the actual condition of the aircraft itself. The thing to understand about distractions is that they are intentionally devised by the adversary in a manner that consumes your time, drains your energy, and continuously takes from you. Eventually, these distractions will veer you off course from your intended purpose. The enemy's motive is to divert your attention away from Christ, hindering your commitment to faithfully serve him. Distractions are designed to shift your focus away from Jesus and also starve your prayer life and your dedicated time of worship. The devil, being the source of confusion, possesses the knowledge of precisely how to disrupt, redirect, and draw away your attention, resulting in your focus being removed from the Lord. The enemy desperately desires for you to invest your time in meaningless pursuits, skillfully coaxing you into engaging in numerous futile activities that rob you of precious time. Distractions manifest in various forms, such as individuals and adversaries who seek to harm you, as well as entertainment that, if not approached with caution, can lead to spending countless hours watching TV shows and movies day after day. The enemy rejoices when we exhaust our energy on endeavors that hold no spiritual value for us. It pleases the adversary when we prioritize things that fail to uplift, strengthen, or enrich our faith. As people who belong to God, it is crucial for us to safeguard our hearts and manage our time wisely. I would like to provide you with four examples that demonstrate how deception operates in our world and why it is widely accepted. The initial example I would like to discuss is what I refer to as the chameleon's disguise. Imagine a chameleon expertly blending into its surroundings, altering its appearance to hide its true identity. Similarly, there are individuals who may appear to be Christians. They speak, act, and even mimic the behavior of a Christian. However, their true intentions and beliefs are far from aligned with Jesus Christ. In the last days, Deception often presents itself in ways that closely resemble the truth, making it challenging for people to distinguish between what is genuine and what is a lie. Jesus warned us about this in Matthew 24, 4, stating that false messiahs and prophets would emerge, performing extraordinary signs and wonders to deceive even the most faithful individuals. Just as observing a chameleon's disguise requires careful attention, we too must be vigilant and discerning, seeking the unwavering truth found in God's word. The second illustration I would like to discuss is the mirage of shiny illusions. Picture a traveler crossing a desert, exhausted and thirsty. In the distance, they spot a glistening oasis, promising relief and refreshment. However, as the traveler approaches, the mirage fades away, leaving behind a sense of disappointment. In the second letter to Timothy, Paul the Apostle cautions that a time will come when people will reject sound teachings. Instead, they will seek out teachers who cater to their own desires and tell them what they want to hear. False teachings can be alluring but deceptive, leaving us spiritually unsatisfied. True refreshment can only be found in the teachings of Christ, which are likened to living water. Another analogy is the puzzle of half-truths where some pieces are missing, giving the illusion of completeness from afar, 
but revealing gaps upon closer examination. Deception often involves weaving partial truths together to create a convincing story. Jesus emphasized the need for discernment, warning against being deceived by those claiming to come in his name. Just as a puzzle requires all its pieces for a coherent picture, we must rely on the complete counsel of God's word to protect ourselves from deception. The final illustration focuses on unmasking deception, referred to as the guiding North Star. Sailors in the past relied on the North Star to navigate the vast oceans before the advent of modern technology. By observing the movement of the sun across the sky, sailors could determine the direction of their ship. Sailors utilized the sun's movement across the sky from east to west to navigate their course. At noon, they could establish their direction north and south by observing the shadows cast by the sun. To determine their heading, sailors had to physically look upward. Similarly, the Word of God serves as our consistent and trustworthy guide amidst the turbulent waters of deceit. Psalm 1919-105 assures us that God's Word is like a lamp illuminating our path, just as the North Star remains fixed amidst the changing skies. The truth found in God's Word stands firm, offering clear guidance in a world filled with confusion. It is crucial for us to remain focused and devoted to God's Word, regardless of how appealing alternative paths may seem or how convinced we are that they will improve our lives. If it drains your spiritual energy, we must turn away from it and distance ourselves. As children of God, it has become increasingly simple to be caught off guard and led astray in today's world. There are various distractions that can captivate us, making it easy to slip away without even realizing we have been ensnared by the devil. One way to ensure victory is by keeping our focus on Christ. This might involve putting down our phones and spending more time with Jesus, turning off the TV, or sacrificing social outings with friends. We are living in the final days and time is limited. Tomorrow is not guaranteed, and it's evident how swiftly the days are passing. Nations are rising against each other. Earthquakes, famines, and wars are prevalent everywhere. It's no longer surprising to hear that some individuals are abandoning their faith. Time is rapidly running out, and the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, will soon return. Will you be prepared, or will you be distracted? Therefore, let me encourage you and emphasize that you should not allow the devil, the world, or sin to divert your attention. Jesus Christ deserves our undivided attention. He is worth so much more. Remember, a restaurant in New York City once had exceptional ratings for their food and service in the early 2000s. However, over time, the primary complaint became slow service. The restaurant conducted research and discovered that the average service time in 2004 was one hour and four minutes. However, in 2014, the average duration of service increased to one hour and 55 minutes, leaving the owners puzzled as they had made minimal changes in the past decade. This sudden rise in service time nearly doubled their previous duration. Upon reviewing surveillance footage from 2004 to 2014, they concluded that the delay was actually caused by the customers themselves. The customers had become so engrossed in their cell phones that every aspect of their dining experience took longer, from ordering and eating to paying the bill. The distraction caused by cell phones wreaked havoc in the restaurant, illustrating how distractions can have a similar disruptive effect on our Christian life. They create chaos by diverting our attention from Jesus and turning it towards sin. It is crucial for us to turn away from evil and focus our gaze upon our magnificent Savior. Luke 17 verse 30 to 33 conveys that on the day when the Son of Man is revealed, those on the housetop with their possessions should not come down to retrieve them, and likewise those in the field should not turn back. We should remember Lot's wife. For whoever seeks to preserve their life will lose it. But those who are willing to lose their life will preserve it. Jesus is engaging in a conversation with his disciples regarding his eventual return. He emphasizes that his second coming will occur unexpectedly. 
resembling an ordinary day when people are engrossed in their daily routines. However, in verses 30 and 31, Jesus advises us to be prepared for that day and to avoid being sidetracked. These parables and examples convey the urgency of being ready because there will be no time to prepare once he appears. Jesus then mentions the cautionary tale of Lot's wife from the book of Genesis. In this story, God warns Lot and his family about the impending destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah due to their wickedness. They are instructed not to look back as they flee the cities. Unfortunately, Lot's wife disobeys and gazes back, resulting in her transformation into a pillar of salt. Jesus uses this account to warn us against being distracted like Lot's wife. If we become so absorbed in worldly matters that we completely divert our attention from Jesus, we will face judgment similar to what happened to Lot's wife. By prioritizing self-preservation, we forfeit our lives to God's judgment. However, when we surrender our lives to following Jesus, we retain them. It is important to note that distractions from Jesus will inevitably arise in life, and although every believer may stumble or even fall at times, those who persevere, repent, and turn to Jesus Christ will receive forgiveness. True Christian maturity lies not in the absence of sin, but in our ability to redirect our focus back to Jesus whenever we fall short. However, numerous individuals have become so preoccupied by the affairs of this world that they have never genuinely turned to Jesus on the Day of Judgment. As a result, they will face judgment similar to Lot's wife, for they have entirely turned away from and rejected God's love. Life presents countless distractions that can divert our attention from Jesus. At times we succumb to the allure of negative influences like destructive substances, forbidden relationships, and lustful thoughts, seeking to satisfy our own desires. However, these desires do not lead to the fulfilling life we anticipate. On other occasions, we find ourselves engrossed in things that may be considered positive, such as our careers, families, and hobbies. While these aspects are indeed good, they become idols when they cause us to avert our gaze from Jesus. Therefore, we must remain vigilant against any distractions that may arise in our lives. We should be cautious not to become consumed by the amount of wealth we accumulate, the success of our families, or the power we wield. When these good things transform into distractions, they can significantly impede our spiritual journey with Christ. God does not require us to abandon our families or quit our jobs. Rather, He calls us to prioritize Him as the foremost and central focus of our lives. Although it might seem as if you're relinquishing your life by shifting your attention from distractions to Jesus, you're actually gaining life. Imagine if the restaurant owners I mentioned earlier requested that people refrain from using their phones while dining. This simple change would result in faster service times, even though customers may initially perceive it as a loss. By putting away their phones, they would gain shorter meal durations, develop deeper connections with their dining companions, and enjoy a more pleasant dining experience. Of course, Customers have the choice to stay on their phones. However, if they decide to sacrifice a little, they stand to gain significantly. The same principle applies when we turn away from sin and turn towards Christ. By shifting our focus away from fulfilling every desire and relinquishing our self-proclaimed authority over our lives, we may lose some relationships and our sense of self-importance. However, the gains far outweigh the losses. We become known as children of God, receive the promise of eternal life, and cultivate a profound, intimate relationship with the one true God. Just as restaurant customers have the option to disconnect from their phones and concentrate on the people present, we also have the choice to redirect our attention to Jesus. So let me ask you, what distractions currently hinder your ability to see Jesus? It may appear daunting to let go of those distractions, but remember that those who belong to Christ have the Holy Spirit residing within them. By turning away from our distractions and focusing on Jesus, He brings order to the chaos and guides us towards genuine life. Heavenly Father, in the quiet of this moment, we turn our hearts to You, 
humbly seeking your divine guidance and protection. On the 8th of April, the skies above us bore witness to a celestial sign, a testament to your grandeur and the mystery of your creation. This heavenly event, a beacon in the vastness of the universe, has stirred our souls and drawn our eyes upwards, prompting us to seek your presence and your purpose. Lord, in the face of this celestial wonder, we ask for your wisdom to discern the message you impart through the grand tapestry of creation. Grant us the clarity to understand your will and the courage to follow the path you lay before us, even when it winds through territories unknown and terrains untraveled. We pray for your protective hand over us, our loved ones, and all those who gaze upon the heavens in awe and curiosity. Shield us from any fear or uncertainty that may arise in the wake of this celestial event. Instead, fill our hearts with the assurance of your love, the comfort of your presence, and the steadfastness of your guidance. May this celestial sign not only remind us of the vastness of your creation, but also of the intimate care you have for each of us. Help us to see beyond the spectacle in the sky to the deeper spiritual truths it signifies and to the closer relationship with you it invites. In moments of doubt or confusion, let us remember that you are the creator of all things, both seen and unseen, and that there is no mystery beyond your understanding or outside your dominion. Help us to trust in your eternal wisdom, to rest in your unchanging love, and to move forward with the confidence that comes from being led by your hand. We offer this prayer in humility and faith, trusting in your divine guidance and protection, and in the enduring promise of your goodness and light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.